rise and shine, ladies and gentlemen. We're starting this Bud's Creek vlog off a little bit early in the morning because I got a little bit of explaining to do. This past week has been crazy hectic. Um, you guys probably know already that last weekend at the Unadilla Pro National, uh, I made one lap of my first practice before my race 250 blew up. So that was quite a bummer. Didn't even get to get one full lap in in practice. So, which was a huge bummer, but it happens in pro motocross. When you're at this level, you're pushing these bikes to their absolute limit every single weekend. Uh, you're bound to experience some bike failures and it's definitely been a while since I have experienced one. So the Walker crew was about due for a bike failure. And last weekend at Unadilla, we got one. That is why there is no race vlog from there because it would be about 30 seconds long and of course being only a couple day turnaround by the time we have to leave again for Bud's Creek I was stressing a little bit that we weren't gonna get the bike ready to come out here but uh, I gotta give a huge huge props to the guys at Championship Power Sports for working overtime all hands on deck getting this bike back together somehow they had every single part necessary to do a full rebuild top and bottom end except for a crank which luckily AEO Power Sports in California had one and they helped Helped us out and overnighted it to championship this week. So massive thank you to championship and AEO Power Sports. We literally would not be at Bud's Creek right now if it weren't for those guys. So extremely, extremely grateful. If you guys have a minute, maybe pop over and go tell them how rad they are for getting us out here this week. But of course the original plan was always to have the backup 450 in case anything went wrong. I could just swap my entry over to the 450 class. But uh, we tried to do that for Bud's Creek and supposedly there's 116 450 sign up so they said there's no way you're getting in so it was pretty much either get the 250 fixed or just hang out until Indiana. So definitely stoked we were able to make that happen and we are out here on the 250 once again which is rad. But yeah it's the morning of the race. Weather said we were getting rain all night but doesn't really look too wet out there so you guys can't really see anything but uh we definitely got some rain leading up to the weekend so walking the track was a little bit muddy yesterday um, but the track crew did a good job of like packing it all in so the water's kind of running off and uh, it doesn't seem I didn't hear any rain last night and it doesn't look like it's any muddier out there than it was last night so I think things are looking good to have a really good day. Kind of just like old times, it's just me and Paul that made the trip over here. Uh, Nikki had a mountain bike race he had to go do, so we'll miss Nikki this weekend. But actually out of nowhere, Joey just happened to be here. So so good old Joey from the past two seasons is gonna be um, going up to the gate with me. So that'll be pretty rad. It'll be just like old times. But yeah, sorry for no Unadilla vlog. Things happen, it's pro motocross. Um, the important thing is we're out here this weekend and we're ready to give this thing another shot. So that's enough of an intro. I'm gonna get my coffee going here, get warmed up and uh, get out on the bike, show you guys the title sponsor for the weekend and get this day rolling. Hopefully it's a rad one. Once again, it's that time of the weekend to uh, give a huge shout out to the title sponsor. And today we have a cool one, Washed Up TV. It's a group of three dudes who actually live near me who have a YouTube channel and they hit me up. They were like, yo, Jaywalk, we're trying to grow the channel and we want to support you. Let's do this thing for Unadilla. I said, absolutely, let's go. So uh, awesome, thank you guys. Really cool, um, like supporting the other YouTube channels and having other YouTube channels support me. It's uh, cool to build a community like that. So if you guys like motocross YouTube, content which i'm assuming you do if you're watching this i will put their link in the description and i'll also have it pop up in the corner and uh, you guys can go check them out do me a favor and show them some love so yeah thank you washed up tv bikes looking sick as always 450a is pulling off the track now and that means that we're up so time to go do this thing paul's looking good back there in the uh team team pit shirt let's go do this thing
hectic morning here at Bud's Creek. Um, honestly, I've never ridden a track quite like this and it definitely took me a while to warm up on it. And uh, practice was not going very well. Um, qualified like 10 spots out. So it just took me a while. I didn't quite feel comfortable. So I don't know, no excuses. I just wasn't riding very good, honestly. Um, and I was feeling pretty down about it. That's why I didn't really film anything between practices because I didn't want that negative energy to come through and just be like in the vlog. I like to keep it kind of uh, high energy and positive. So uh, I just went out for the LCQ, as you guys saw. I think I started maybe like seventh. Uh, just picked off enough guys to put it in. And uh, yeah, so we're into the motos. You can't tell, it is hot as balls out here. I am dripping right now, so definitely getting on the steel supplements, keeping me hydrated for today. Um, and it should be a good one, but yeah, this track is so interesting. I can see how like, if you rode here a lot, you would be really, really fast here. And like, honestly, I feel like if you're fast here, you can be fast anywhere. Cause it is like so tricky, so many off cambers. Like, honestly, I think there's one flat corner on the track. So it took me a little time to warm up, but I think we're finally getting there. By the time these motos roll around, we should be shredding. So yeah, started off a little shaky, but we're onto the motos. That's all that counts.
that number four spot to match. Yeah. This is what we look for in outdoor motor. The 250 MX overall wins list. He's now tied with Steve Lampton. Steve Lampton having 20 wins as well. But Steve Lampton has the distinction of being the only guy to win an overall on a 125 at motor presentation. Uh, I like to see him and his twin sister together. Yeah. He is just hilarious. Those two are just absolutely hilarious. Yeah, the whole family up on top of the facility. You nice know, they job, use a nice different job. program. They don't train on the Millville National Tank. Yeah, it's possible. It is slick right there for sure. Oh my god. I am whooped. <laughs> Absolutely whooped. What do you think, Joey? It's a fun day. Glad I was able to come. Good finish. Kale, what do you think? I'm happy with how I did, man. That's for sure. You were hauling in that LCQ. What place yeah. did you get? Uh, 13th. Wow. Yeah, I thought you were yeah. in the top 10 there. The full gate out of 40, I'm really happy. Yeah, you were smoking, dude. dude. Green qualifying, too. Yeah, not bad. I can't believe how gnarly the track is. That big up will triple in the middle. Ruts like this deep all the way up it. <laughs> and then ruts as soon as you landed. So one or two times I OJ'd it and landed in the ruts and I was just like, we might die right now. Right now. <laughs> well, that is a wrap on the day here at Bud's Creek, ladies and gentlemen. Physically and mentally exhausting day. Physically, obviously, because the track is gnarly and uh, it's hot out here. You boys on the East Coast are just simply built different for riding this stuff all the time. <laughs> That's one of the gnarliest tracks I've ever ridden. Not so much just like raw physical output, but those ruts, um, the off cambers, the slick dirt, you just gotta be on top of your game all day. And uh, it was a gnarly day to say the least, but yeah. Mentally a little taxing just because of how rough the day started out. As I said in practice, um, just was not gelling with the track. Definitely took me a while to warm up on it. And uh, yeah, going to the LCQ is always a little bit stressful. And normally when I go to the LCQ, I'm just like, you know, a tenth to half of a second off of qualifying. So I still have confidence that I'll be able to get a good start and work my way up into qualifying position. But today I was like, two whole seconds off of qualifying. Um, that's how bad I was in in practice. And so I just didn't have that like same confidence going into the LCQ. And that's obviously never a good feeling. Uh, obviously not being confident in a pro national in general is not a good thing, but when you're heading into the LCQ, which is, you guys know, it's, it's just chaos. Um, that's never a good thing to head into that without some good confidence. But for whatever reason, whenever the gate drops, um, there's like a switch that turns on or off in my head and uh, I'm just like a completely different rider once that gate drops. So I was just charging into sections way faster than I thought I was able to in practice, was making passes and uh, yeah, I mean, w like I said, once the, once the gate drops, something changes in my head and hopefully I can figure that out eventually in practice so I don't have to do those LCQs, but I mean, I'd rather have it this way than to be like a practice hero and not be able to lay it down in the motos. So give or take, um, bittersweet, whatever you want to call it. Um, the point is we got the job done, put it in the motos and uh, turned the day around for sure. I was super bummed um, between practice and the LCQ. Like I was sitting there talking to my dad and I was just like, I mean, what am I doing? Like, like it may not look like it, but I'm a pretty um, like mental person like confidence is pretty huge for me and um if i have one bad day like i completely forget about all the good results i've had this year and i was just sitting there feeling pretty bad about myself so to turn things around in the motos was huge for me um it's definitely what i needed heading into these next couple races uh moto one i was running really solid the whole race uh there was a group of us from like 23rd to 27th that were all battling out just kind of going back and forth um, and then with seven minutes to go, I had just a stupid little tip over, didn't hurt or anything. But as I was picking my bike back up, the dude behind me ran straight over my ankle. 
Um, so that hurt like a son of a gun. And uh, for a minute, I thought I might have broken it, but obviously went back to the RV. It was all good. I uh, just packed it with ice, got some Advil, and suited up for Moto2. I actually wasn't really sure if I was going to be able to do Moto2, but I was like, with how the past three races have gone, um, not being able to do Dilla, we didn't go out to Washougal, and then Millville obviously had that sickness that kept me from finishing. I was like, I just need to get out there and uh, put in a good result. So toughed it out, went up, lined up for Moto2, and um, super, super stoked that I did because obviously we ended up the Moto in 24th, which I am freaking stoked on. Um, that's our best Moto finish of the year so far, um, and it was on a track that I consider to be, you know, one of my weakest of the year. So I think that's a testament to where where we're at uh, physically and speed wise. Actually, I think my Moto Fitness kind of has taken a hit um, just because, like I said, I haven't been able to actually finish a pro motocross race since Southwick, and that's something that is hard to get just from practicing so um i'm definitely going to be racing myself back into shape and i actually gave up like two positions on those last couple laps just because um i simply got tired like there were two guys that i passed in the middle of the moto that ended up um clicking me back off by the end and that was just because i got tired and couldn't couldn't maintain the same lap time that i had in the early moto so luckily we have four races in a row including this one so um this one was a great building block hopefully we can just keep racing our way back into shape and uh by the time we get to california you know points are definitely still on the table and i'm just slowly slowly working my way down to it so i think points are pretty realistic for the last couple rounds that's what i'm going to be aiming for i'm really excited for indiana because that one has been a pretty good for one for me in the past that's actually where i scored points for the first time in 2018 when it was an absolute mud fest so so yeah once again i gotta give a huge thank you to championship power sports and aeo power sports for making this weekend happen um getting the 250 all back together i wasn't even sure in the middle of this week whether i was going to be out here racing or not and those guys made it happen shout out to the title sponsor washed up tv once again go check those guys out out. It's pretty rad having them on. MX Locker for staying with the program this year. Those guys are sick. Um, Ichthu CBD, the Veteran MX Foundation. Lots of cool people helping make this happen. So um, thank you guys. Tune back in next week for the Indiana Pro National. And we have a lot of fun stuff. A lot of fun surprises coming up for you guys away from the Pro National. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for tuning in as always. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. This is our moment. Always on a grind till the sun come on us They can never control us Running for the prize, raise high for the toast This is our moment This is our moment